This video is all about paint water and whether or not you should be concerned about it. Hi, I'm Tom and welcome to the channel of the Mini Mad Cat. I predominantly paint miniatures and try to create content on the internet in order to promote my commission services. Usually I'm doing showcases of my painted miniatures, maybe a tutorial of how I painted something. But this video is something else. I've been preparing for this video for over six months by saving up all my paint water so I can take you through the process of flocculation. It's kind of cool to watch, chemically kind of a miracle, and I figured the bigger the body of water, the better I'd capture it. However, in doing so, I added other components like isopropyl alcohol, mineral spirits, possibly enamels, and by mistake, what I created initially unknowingly, was something that's technically referred to as a slurry. I've lost the footage of the original untreated body of it, and despite looking at my live streams, I still can't find it. New production mistake, I guess, so here's a picture of another slurry I found that's similar in appearance. I suppose mine was maybe a bit greyer, uh, but it still had a bit of a green tint to it. In fact, mine had a little layer of green over the top because one of the last things I did was empty a bottle of light green ink into it as I was cleaning it out for use with another paint and um, so it looked really horrible. That's kind of what it looked like. As a result of creating this concoction, before I get to show you one of the many ways you might consider dealing with your own regular paint water, I had to pass all of the slurry I'd created through an activated carbon filter. I'm not an expert in water treatment. Despite a short four year history in pool water treatment in a past life. However, I am a trained professional and I have consulted with other trained professionals to do this and to take all the necessary precautions for this video. I must say for legal reasons that you should not try this at home. Flocculation isn't the only way to dispose of normal paint water. I'll cover all the methods I found in this journey of chemistry and water treatment and why I went with flocculation for this video. You can see the colour and quality of the water. It got worse as I dipped deeper. The opaque effluence had an odious odour. On first contact with the activated carbon, it bubbled like the sulphur pits of the hellish deep. My research saved me from potentially serious injury or death. On that note, I'd like to reiterate that you should not try what I've done in this video at home. Flocculating normal acrylic paint water the way I'll be doing later on should be fine. I still advise that you take caution and consult your local waste disposal professionals. If you were going to do this yourself, wear gloves, eye protection, a proper mask and do it in a well ventilated area as I'm not really 100% clear on off gassing or byproducts from the process. The chemicals involved are hazardous and you should consult and follow proper safety precautions. Speaking of waste disposal professionals, your local wastewater treatment facilities should and most likely do remove all of the acrylic particles in a similar or more advanced method as I'll be doing. So there's an argument that if you're living with the convenience of a large municipal water supply, disposing of normal acrylic paint water down the drain shouldn't be a problem. However, there's at least your own drains to think about, and over time you'll build up acrylic paint deposits somewhere down the line and have a blockage. And when you get to see how much acrylic plastic I pull out of six months of paint water, you yourself might reconsider simply throwing your paint water down the sink. If I'm honest, my thinking is that every acrylic parcel I throw down my sink, as good as the local water treatment might be, there's a chance one or more of those particles could end up in someone's seafood dinner. And I'm not really down with that. I've been throwing my wastewater down the drain for well over six years. Six months ago, that stopped. This time, the process was extensive and exhaustive. Because of the contamination and pre-filtration, 
availability of tools, restriction of space to process such a high volume and it being a first time experience. Next time will be different. Here are the methods to dispose of acrylic wastewater that I've found and come across. Number one, if you're in a hot enough country, you can just sit it outside and I'm told the water will evaporate out, leaving the solid acrylic deposits behind. This doesn't tend to work in England and I'm sort of overly skeptical about it too, with a tiny concern that particles of acrylic might be lifted out during evaporation and added to the atmosphere and caught me paranoid. Number two. You can get various sink trap filters, which I'm told can catch some particles before they go down the drain hole. Maybe there are some really chunky particles for some normal acrylic artist paints, but I can't imagine this working with the fine pigment paints used in miniature painting. What do you think? Has anyone any experience of using these and do they actually work? Number three. You can create a little sand and gravel pit in your backyard and just chuck it down there. I think it's called a sedimentary filter. Uh, if you ask me, this is mental. You're throwing plastic into the ground basically and gravel filter or not, if at some point you want to grow something around that space, you, that plant or, or whatever is going to be pulling up those plastics, I would have thought. It's not a good move, crazy. Number four, post drain filters are a thing apparently. If you've got enough money, then you can have a solid separator installed under a sink of your choice by a plumber and that'll do the job. Number five, you can pass it all through a coffee filter, maybe in a funnel over a bucket or a bin or something underneath. It'll filter out all the solid parts, but there's still going to be dirty paint water left with tiny microplastics in it. And for me, it kind of misses the point. Number six. Cat litter. Yeah, it'll clump up. You can just boil it up and throw it in the bin. It's pretty expensive if you paint a lot and ultimately will be breaking down somewhere but it's not a terrible method of disposing of it, I suppose. Number seven. This is the method I'm using, which is a combination of pH shocking, flocculation and filtration, sometimes known in artist circles as the golden crash system. A method that Golden So Flat artist acrylics have published, and I believe they've come up with a product package you can purchase from them where you get a complete kit which probably makes this whole process easier. If this video does well enough, maybe we'll be able to convince Golden So Flat to send us one of these packages and we can demonstrate it on screen the next time I'm treating my next batch of acrylic effluents. You'd have seen me put about four gallons of this slurry through my makeshift carbon filters if I'd have been able to film all of the process. This is what I was left with, which is basically acrylic paint water, safe and ready for flocculation. I'll get you right into the flocculation process. We add aluminium sulfate and hydrated lime stirring lots in between. I've calculated the volume of water approximately to 3.8 gallons. The ratio is about half a tablespoon well-rounded of aluminium sulfate to every gallon and about three quarters of a tablespoon of powdered lime per gallon. You're meant to dissolve the alu sulfate in water first, but I negated to follow this step and I just added it straight in and it didn't seem to have any problems. I overestimated and put what I think four gallons would need, which is good because I used teaspoon measures instead of tablespoon measures. So thankfully it was enough for flocculation to occur, which I just guess is just a win because it means I used less of the chemicals to actually complete the process. So 
whilst it flocculates, some of the potential dangers I uncovered. One of the concerns of flocculating the slurry as it was, was the presence of isopropyl alcohol. Mixing lime, which I believe is the catalyst in this reaction, with isopropyl can lead to the formation of something called peracetic acid, which doesn't sound healthy. And if for some reason bleach had got in there, I could have ended up making chloroform, which I'm guessing is probably illegal because chloroform can lead to unlife and unlife is definitely bad uh, unless you're in Canada. So sorry, Canada. There are other possibilities. Maybe somehow methanol would be present. Maybe as a result of the isopropanol becoming denatured and combining with some other chemical or compound present. Methanol, combined with an oil substrate, like mineral spirits, for example, can sometimes create mixtures capable of creating its own oxygen, and thus being nearly impossible to put out if it catches light. Methanol alone burns with invisible flames. I like my flames visible and extinguishable. Thank you very much. Just the idea of something so volatile and dangerous being present made dealing with this concoction, this slurry, a greater and greater concern as time had gone on. Before my friend Gavin Average and I were satisfied that we'd come up with a safe method to treat and dispose of this slurry, I was becoming more and more convinced that I was going to just have to hand this over to a friend. I have a friend who works in health and safety and he offered to come and retrieve it for inclusion in an industrial waste slurry that was due to be processed. But that, whilst it would have been hilariously iconic as the conclusion to this video, left me extremely dissatisfied with the outcome for the last six months of having saved the stuff up. So we passed it all through an activated carbon filter, as you've seen, which neutralized the isopropanol, and research showed that the mineral spirits would have stayed separated and evaporated off, so we didn't need to worry about that in the flocculation process. Well, as you've seen, flocculation worked, and it's kind of cool to watch. It doesn't take that long, so you can just, you can just literally do it and watch it, and if you've got nothing to do, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, you know, it's a thing to do, to experience. So yeah, flocculation worked, and I was left with over three and a half gallons of clear water and about 500 millilitres of thick acrylic sludge. It took a few days to get it all passed through coffee filters after flocculation and produce This and that. That is the near four gallons of water. There's probably one more good stage of filtration away from being potable. I could almost definitely use it to clean my paintbrushes in and start the whole process again as it is. It can also safely go down the sink, which is probably what I'm going to do with it. Before we knew whether or not we were going to be able to separate off all of the other potential hazards, we were discussing maybe just cooking it off on a fire. And whilst I went and bought an antique aluminium heat retaining test tube storage bowl that would have been great for sticking on the fire, and cooking it off. There's just no need because it's, it's basically just water. Now, this, as I've shown you, is the waste product. And I'm wondering what I might be able to do with it. Could I turn it into little tokens? Could I bathe in it and sell it for a premium? Maybe I could throw it at my next door neighbor's house. I don't expect this will be the last video covering this topic I'll do, as I think there's a few more interesting concepts I'd like to explore and build on in the future. Of course, next time I'll drink it, if this video gets 2,500 likes or views or something. 2,500 likes, sure, let's hit a really big target, because I don't really want to drink it. I did actually try this uh, stuff, 
and I think it may have made me feel a little ill for a few days, so don't drink it. It's not for drinking. Once you've gotten to the stage that I've got to, like I say, it needs at least one more stage of filtration before you think about doing that. Don't do it. I might be interested in getting a professional water treatment specialist in to give an interview critiquing this whole process. Let me know what your thoughts down below are. Personally, I'll not be saving more than a gallon in the future. Processing a single gallon compared to the four that I did process would have been much easier, less involved and time consuming. As a result of creating the slurry in the first place and the pre-filtration, I went through 800 grams of activated charcoal, a filter media bag, half a roll of good kitchen paper, several pairs of nitrile gloves and a large plastic bottle. And all that went into a plastic bag. But the flocculation only went through a few coffee filters. Therefore, if I'm just handling simple acrylic paint water in the future, which is what I intend to do and never contaminate it ever again like I have done, it's a very low waste result and for me it's a kind of a no-brainer. In conclusion, I'd say that there's no right way to do it necessarily. But having bought what I need to flocculate my paint water for the rest of my life, having cost me less than the cost of a meal out, and with the amount of plastic I've personally stopped going back into the water system this time round, I'll be continuing with flocculation going forward until something better comes to my attention. It depends on where you are in the world, what your wastewater treatment services and municipal water treatment is like, and how much effort you decide it is worth you dealing with it. Ultimately, the vast majority of this kind of waste is produced by big companies, and our personal choices only will make so much of an impact. That being said, I do wonder how much of an impact could be made if every miniature painter adopted this kind of approach. I paint almost every day and have regular commission work, so a litre of acrylic sludge would definitely be too much to ascribe to each one of you, but it's somewhere between a, a litre or less a year, I guess, either way, right? There's some big commission painters out there that probably put out more than I do. If you know any of them, tell them about this video. Guys, commission painters, fellow commission painters, what do you think? Are you going to adopt this method? Are you going to stop throwing all that plastic down the drain? Or are you just going to let your local water guy deal with it? Maybe you've already got something in place. I'm interested to hear what you're doing, if you've already put anything in place. And if this is a method that you intend to adopt, I very much like to see a comment down below. And I think it would be a pretty cool thing to see more people doing. I'd like to commend the Golden So Flat Acrylics for their efforts within the industry to raise awareness and provide a simple solution and I'd like to see others in the industry make similar efforts to raise awareness on the topic. I feel like it's a subject that ends up going so vast and wide because it's such a big problem. <laughs> and it can feel like getting lost at sea when looking at all the options of how to dispose of it or not. Plastics, they're not really going anywhere. They're part of the forever chemicals we're kind of stuck with. With microplastics being found coming out of fresh water sources now, they've kind of permeated the water supply completely. I've not really got huge issues with plastic being made into figures, which people will paint and cherish and play games with for the rest of their lives. I think it's quite a good use of the stuff if we've got to have it around. Better than plastic bottles or food packaging that's leaching into our diets and ends up in waste dumps. Tell me what you think. Will you be giving this a try? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd like to thank David M. Kessler Fine Art and the Dotting Center here on YouTube for their videos on the topic which got me going after I became interested in the subject. Thanks also to Fun With Fisty for offering to help dispose of the slurry when things were looking bleak and especially to Gavin Average for sticking with me on this and giving me as much of your time and your brain power as you were able to in helping me understand what I was doing and preventing me from blowing myself up or unaliving myself, basically. Thanks, Gav. Still here. And for all of those of you who have gotten to the end of this video, I'd ask you to go and support me on Patreon. The starter tier is £2, which is less than the price of a coffee. And every member is a huge help in my mission to becoming one of the biggest miniature painting channels here on YouTube. If you like my content, 
then I can't stress enough that I really need the help right now. I'm faced with potentially having to move house because where I'm staying is, is for sale. I have an opportunity to move in with a friend in a different city, but right now it's beyond my capability. But it would provide me with a space that's separate from my bedroom, much bigger that I can produce content in for you guys. I'm sure you'd see better content and a happier mad cat out of it. So please join the Patreon and give me a hand. I'm in desperate need. I really am. With your help, I could explore that opportunity or other opportunities. Click on the like button, subscribe, click on the bell, put a comment down below. It really boosts the video in the algorithm. I'm the mini mad cat. Thanks for watching. And remember to question everything and have fun. Wishing that I